Meeting will come to order. We are now holding our regularly scheduled meeting held Tuesday, October 6, 2015 at 9 a.m. At this time, if you would, please rise. I will give the invocation. That will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Zork. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come before you today. And we do this in a somber occasion where we think about those family members in the Oregon tragedy. May we think about them and, and pray for those that, that were affected by that. And and be thankful, Lord, for, for what we have in this community. And uh, may we use your guidance, your knowledge, and your wisdom as we move forward with this meeting today. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioners, are there any, any uh, modifications to the agenda? Yes. yes. Mr. Baird. Yes, we'd like to add a presentation on um, the status of our situation with the uh, waste management on the recycling and garbage pickup. Good. Yes, it would be it would be 5D. All right. Anything else, commissioners? Approve as amended. I got a motion from Commissioner Solari with a second from Commissioner Flesher to approve the orders of the day as amended. If there's no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. That moves us to the proclamations and presentations. And uh, I've got a, this one is one that, that I do with great pride. Uh, this is a pro pro proclamation, a presentation of a proclamation designating the month of October 2015 as Fighting Indian Marching Band Month. And so I see Mr. Sammons out there with the crew. Come on up, guys. Hey, everybody, come on up. Come on up. Yes, come on up, because this, this is going to be a team effort. Where are the instruments? <laughs> First of all, welcome, and uh, thank you very much for being here. And this is truly an honor for uh, for me to read this for because it's, it's got uh, it's got a purpose too, and, and uh, it'll be as follows. This is a proclamation designating the month of October 2015 as Fighting Indians Marching Band Month. Whereas the Fighting Indians Marching Band, under the direction of James M. Sammons, has entertained, thrilled, and supported the community of Indian River County over the past 35 years through its performance at football games and parades. And whereas this local beloved institution, known as the Pride of the Treasure Coast, has represented this community throughout the state of Florida and the United States with performances in such notable venues as the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, the Tournament of Roses, and the Fiesta Bowl Parade. And whereas the Fighting Indians Marching Band has been invited to perform in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl Parade, a nationally broad broadcast pregame show this December 31st, 2015. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Indian River County, Florida, that the month of October 15th to th October of 2015 be designated as Fighting Indian B Marching Band Month in Indian River County, and the Board encourages all citizens to recognize and appreciate the hard work and high achievement of these band members and their directors and staff. Adopted the sixth day of October 2015, signed by all five county commissioners. Mr. Sammons, welcome. Well, thank you all very much for having us and for taking your time to prepare that nice uh, memento for us. Uh, hopefully, um, your backing um, will help us uh, raise the money that we need to get there and, and make uh, everyone aware of how hard uh, the students work. Um, in addition to doing our normal things, you know, prepare, preparing for the Peach Bowl is uh, additional rehearsals and <clears throat> a lot of additional cost uh, uh, for us. And um, we're, we're counting on uh, the community support to, to get us there as they have in the past. Well, and, and that was the reason for, and the purpose for this proclamation was for, to everybody, uh, you know, you do the band festival, you do the crown jewel. Um, but this is in addition to that. This yes. is uh, you're still going to have to do all those other things, and and we've got a very very philanthropic community, and uh, looking forward to helping support not just with the, the, the support the band as we always have in the past, but also uh, the, these special venues and endeavors because really um, you get paid the same whether you go to this or not. But this is more work for you, and uh, and and I and I say that in in a, a very flattering way because clearly um, after 35 years. The, the the burn hasn't stopped, and and I, I never will forget talking to Gary Lindsay, whom I've had the opportunity to serve on the school board with. I called him my wise old owl, and uh, 
And Gary Lindsay said, Dr. Burns had a philosophy. And that philosophy was, he says, you know, if you pull together a good band and a good football team at a high school, it seems like everything else will fall into place. And I couldn't agree with him more. And then thanks, Mr. Lindsay, for that as well. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. Well, thank you all very much. Mr. Uh, yeah, Mr. Pleasure. Mr. Simons, yes, uh, uh, Commissioner Davis and I uh, customarily wear blue. You know, <laughs> we're, we're from the Sebastian <laughs> <okay>. area. <laughs> I just wanted, you know, it's a, a little confession. Uh, and But I've always enjoyed the band uh, tremendously, especially at the, the Crown Jewel performance. And I, I wanted to add that uh, the level of patriotism that you have always interlaced in that band is absolutely incredible. I, I, I couldn't see uh, a Memorial Island ceremony by the veterans w without the band. Uh, and uh, I'm very glad that you instill that. That's, that's a very, very strong point and uh, well done. And uh, I'd, I'd like to see it uh, continued. I, I think it's a, a great message for the not only the performance but the rest of the students and the rest of our community. Um, in, in addition, I'm not fond of dunk tanks, but uh, I, I think we might be able to get a couple of volunteers if you have a fundraising scenario. I, I, I think we, we show of hands. I mean, be sure, there. we could be sure. all in, right? If we're available, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. We, any, anything for your students because they are great performers under your direction. Well, thank you. I'm sure we could draw quite a crowd uh, with certain individuals on the dunk tank. There's no, no question. You're, you're about you mean Joe Baird, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, no, we're not doing dunk tanks. No. <laughs> well, again, thank you for your kind re remarks, uh, Commissioner Fletcher. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Come on up. Very good. Thank you. Come on up. Everybody. Uh, they may not want to picture with us. There we go. Thank you, team. The band with their dunk tank volunteers. <laughs> there you go. I think we've got somebody else wants to take a picture. Yeah, All more. right, Mr. Taylor. It's paparazzi today. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thank you. 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 Uh, might have one. Absolutely. <laughs> that moves us to our next proclamation, which is a, present, a proclamation uh, designating October 15th as Manufacturing Month in Indian River County. And I see that we have our chamber out there. Come on up, Jay and the crew. Welcome. This uh, proclamation will be given by Commissioner Solari. Good, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. I'm very happy to read this proclamation designating October 2015 as Manufacturing Month in Indian River County, Florida. Whereas the manufacturing industry is vital to the health of our county, the state of Florida, and our nation, and whereas manufacturing is a cornerstone of our local economy, helping to sustain our quality of life as well as a solid and diversified tax base in Indian River County, and whereas Indian River County, in partnership with the Indian River County Chamber of Commerce, supports manufacturing and manufacturing careers. And, whereas, manufacturing provides 2,095 high-wage and high-skilled jobs in Indian River County, paying an annual average wage of $43,628. And, whereas, our county is home to 132 manufacturers that produce a wide variety of products, from personal aircraft to personal submersibles, and paddle boats to expandable pontoon boats, and whereas public awareness of the value manufacturers add to our economy <coughs> is essential to the maintenance of good community industry relationships, and whereas all residents are encouraged to take time to salute Indian River County manufacturers and their employees for the positive economic impact they make in our county, the state, and our nation. 
Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners in River County, Florida, that the month of October 2015 be designated as Manufacturing Month in Indian River County, adopted the 6th day of October 2015, and signed by all five members of the Board of County Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning, oh. Helene. Good morning. Good Welcome. morning. For the record, Helene Castletine, Economic Development Director with the Indian River County Chamber of Commerce, and thank you for commissioners in joining us as well as about communities throughout the country in recognizing the positive impact that manufacturing has on our economy. As noted, manufacturers do offer our local residents those year-round, high-wage, high-skilled jobs with benefits and while diversifying our tax base. And if you were to do the math and you multiply those 2,000-some jobs by the 46,000 in average wage, comes up to $91.4 million in paychecks circulating in our local economy just from the manufacturing industry sector. I think that's pretty significant. So manufacturers also are contributory businesses, meaning that they sell their products outside the area, many outside the country, and bringing that revenue back into our county to circulate within the county. Um, this recognition is just one of the many activities that we have in our business retention expansion program, which of course is part of our overall economic development uh, initiative and as a way to reintroduce our local residents to today's manufacturing industry and highlight its importance. We've scheduled a number of activities throughout the month. Um, three, uh, we've scheduled three tours of local manufacturers. This Thursday, October 8th, we'll be taking a group to Parker Hannifin out on 98th Avenue. Next Wednesday, October 14th, we'll be going over to Aluma Tower on Old Dixie Highway. And on October 29th, we'll be going to Nylacar, again, out on 98th Avenue. And, of course, we welcome your participation to any or all of those. Or anyone who is listening or watching this meeting, they can call the chamber at 567-3491 to make a reservation for any or all of those tours. I also want to mention that Aluma Tower has also scheduled a tour specifically for students at Indian River State College, which I think is terrific. Um, we also arranged for representatives from Profold to give a presentation to students at the Charter High School to talk about manufacturing as a potential career path. Um, last week we did a virtual tour of Dragonfly Boat Works out on, over on Aviation Boulevard, interviewed its owner, um, Mark Caslow, and you can view that um, tomorrow at 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. on Vero Buzz TV or on YouTube after that. So if you'll indulge me, I'd like to take a moment and introduce those who are with me today. Absolutely. Um, we have Jay Hart with Alex McWilliam Real Estate, and Jay is the chairman of our Economic Leadership Alliance Investment Program. We have Angela Edford, who is the um, president and general manager of Aluma Tower. And we have Scott Cooley, who's the co-owner of Nylacarb Corporation. And just as an aside, um, you might remember last year, well actually it was earlier this year, we had a film crew from How It's Made, you yes. know that show it's on Science Channel? Yes. Yeah, one of my favorite shows. I saw it. And uh, at any rate, they're going to be back down here what? early next year. Really? I spoke to the guy yesterday. What do they want to see this time? How grapefruit's well, made? Well, I'm sorry? They want to see how grapefruit's made? I don't know. I don't know. I, I've given them a few suggestions already because some of our, our local manufacturers have shown interest already, but, you know, certainly that list can grow. Neat. So it's exciting. Um, the the um, uh, film, or the, uh, <clears throat> the show that they shot in January of this year is supposed to, I think, show or air in December cool. of this year. So I'm really cool. looking forward to that. And that was Piper Aircraft and Gerard Equipment. So that will be neat to see. And both of those, good. Nice. Yes. So thank you, Commissioners. We really appreciate you uh, recognizing the importance of manufacturing in Indian River County. Thank Super. you. Thank Come on up. You. Yep. That would be neat. That would be neat, yeah. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> hey, good morning. Thank you. Hey, thanks for coming down this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you know how this works. Good morning. Good morning. Take a picture. We got a picture. We deliberately let you go second so you'd know how to do this. <laughs> Pressure's on. She's on. This is a real camera. Isn't that the truth? This is not a drill. 
proclamation. Oh, well, well, you have to yeah, give it to him. Here's Bob Slow. He, he doesn't, we don't give him many opportunities to read these things for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, ready? There you go. One more. Smile. Too late. <laughs> Still blinking. Yeah. Yep, that's a real camera. <laughs> that's why they, that's why they don't use those anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's used to taking pictures from eighteen thousand feet. <laughs> it's a close up. All right. Our next proclamation uh, is going to be, actually the presentation is going to be the uh, the presentation by uh, Colonel Zuckert, Mark, Marty Zuckert, with the Veterans Council of Indian River County on the first annual Veterans and Family Picnic, uh, October 17, 2015. Colonel, welcome. Hi there. Good morning. Uh, before I start this, let me tell you my weekend. I careful, <laughs> careful now. <laughs> Well, it was, uh, everybody that knows me knows that humility is not one of my big topics. <laughs> but I went out, uh, I, I got started on this picnic, and I wanted to find out how things were done in the county. I worked with the city a lot on Memorial Day, Veterans Day. I'd never worked with the county. Uh, you did the golf tournament, but I wasn't part of that. So I wanted to find out how things worked with the city. So I was standing out uh, at the Tunnels to Tower Race and talking to Daryl Lohr, and he said, well, you've got to have a permit to do something at the park. I went, great, who do I get that from? He turned around and pointed at Wesley. <laughs> so I got that started. turned out someone else had already done that. But I ended up uh, coming in to the recreation department. I, I met uh, Jillian Sparks, who's one of your new hires. Uh, brilliant. She introduced me to a couple of things that were going on in Indian River County. I've also taken over the public affairs section for the Veterans Council. And I said, this would be really kind of neat. And one of them was the Special Olympics. I had never participated in Special Olympics. Uh, wow. Absolutely wow. Yeah. It, it, not only was it so well run, but the fact that they're out there doing the things they're doing, you just kind of go... My problems are nothing Amen. compared to that. Then uh, Joe took me to the uh, events that evening, and, and the joy that those kids have, I, I can't even explain it. It is unbelievable. Then uh, I went out, and on Sunday, the more severely handicapped folks are racing. There was a lady there in a wheelchair. They put her in the, in the pool with the lowering device they have out there, the only thing she could move was her left arm, and she paddled 15 meters with her left arm. You know, that's awesome. So I'd like to thank you for, first of all, for getting it, getting it to me to go, wow, I need to do this. So when you come to the next one, give me a holler. You're on. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the Indian River County annual picnic we're about to do. Uh, started out, uh, where'd, my, where'd Tim go? Tim, Tim can barely move. Tim, uh, Tim Nightingale, uh, Vic Diaz, myself, uh, a couple other folks have been trying for five years to reinitiate the uh, American Legion post 181 in Gifford. And about six months ago, we made one real effort. We're going to do this or die. And we did. And they came to realize, because of the people we brought out there, that they needed to get involved because there was a lot of benefits they were missing. Their suggestion was, why don't we have a picnic and bring the community together? I'm sure you all are well aware that Sebastian is the North Country and we're the South Country and all that. And I've been fighting that battle for years. But they came up with the idea. And so they're organizing it. They're doing the majority of the work. Wanda Scott, Al Davis are the folks from 181. Uh, September was the first time we have ever had them in a uh, board meeting. And it, it was absolute thrill to see those folks there. So that's how the whole thing got started. And then I got involved with what is the county involvement in this because 
I'd never worked with them before. So I went to see uh, Michael Zito. That got me started. And then <clears throat> I went to see uh, Mike Redstone, David Fleetwood, Larry Staley, and the entire group that you have in the Parks and Recreation, you are blessed. Uh, man, it's just, yes, sir, what can we do? How can we make this better? I went to the All-American Rally, and I was looking for a few things. Uh, I thought I had it, had it done. And to show you the commissioner's involvement in it, Tim Zork has cornhole. Two sets, and I'm going to use both of them. Because that's such a fun game. And I don't know why people like it, but it's really a fun game. <laughs> you can do it and hold a beer at the same time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so everybody has participated in this, and uh, it's going to be on, on Saturday, October 17th. We have asked uh, folks to contribute a $25 gift certificate. Our goal is to identify veterans. We're aiming this more at the young veterans. Uh, and their families to come out, have a good time. We uh, expect to have 500 people there. I'm personally, I think there's going to be more. But this is the first one, and we're going to make it go, and I can't thank you enough for the, uh, the support that I've gotten, everything that I've done. The, uh, you folks have been absolutely wonderful. Uh, the band, boy, what a great time to show up and do this. I can't even imagine Veterans Day or Memorial Day without the band. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness the school board saw it the same way. So Veterans Day is a tough one because it's a floating holiday. But they're letting the kids off excused absences, so that's great. Uh, lots of things going on. I left some flyers out on the table there for anyone. If you would take these, uh, post them somewhere. I know there's a lot of veterans floating around. We've got 18, 19,000 in the county. So we're trying to get everybody out, get them aboard, and uh, I'm going to let Tim jump in there. I, I don't know mo uh, what more I can say other than what Marty said already, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to serve all the veterans here in Indian River County. Uh, it's a first, and uh, we're, we're trying to uh, make it an ongoing process. Gentlemen, first of all, thank you for our service, for your service to our country, and uh, we do appreciate that as a, as a, a community. But also, what the Veterans Council epitomizes is what I would say is the best in any River County, and that is, as a commission, we provide some structure, but it's you, our veterans, that have the burn. You're the ones that go through, and uh, you take the, the funds that we allocate and you, you amplify it, you multiply it, and you allocate it, and and you put it where we have nothing but one of the best veterans councils in the state of Florida, if not the nation. And and that's not because of the money we provide. That's because we get out of your way and let you do what you know to do best. Thank you. And uh, and that's it just that's the way we have with our humane society, with our some our, our uh, soccer associations, lacrosse, the, all these individuals and groups. They have the burn. And so this is, this is the role model of how these organizations should be ran jointly with the county. And, uh, it, and, and thank you for the compliment of our rec department. Um, you're, you're right on point. They didn't have to, and to, for the past 10 years, do the Special Olympics. Yep. And it goes just back to what I told Mr. Sammons earlier whenever we, we mentioned that. They, they're getting the same amount of pay, but that's just a whole lot more work. Yep. And, and they do it because of the love. They do it the, the difference it makes in this community, the, the financial implications and the benefits to this community. And uh, to go up there and see the, um, the Knights of Columbus uh, and, and, and put things on and to volunteer the way they do. I, I'm sorry I missed it. I had a, a, a charity event for the Rotary Club. We were trying to fight polio that day while y'all were helping out at the North County Aquatic Center here in Inver River County. <coughs> but uh, it, it is. It's, it's, it's something uh, to be recognized, and I certainly do appreciate all, the, all that y'all do and put forward. And, Commissioner, appreciate you uh, pinch hitting for me. Well, we got through it without you, but uh, we look forward to seeing you next year. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and, and again, as the Colonel said, uh, he, he got the bug, same way as I got the bug <laughs> 10 years ago with yep. you all. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, veterans, uh, this, this Veterans Council is about veterans helping veterans, but that's not where it ends. They do a lot in the community, and uh, thank you for your active service, and thank you for your continued service. Uh, when I look at Tim, I think of, you know, we talk about toys for tots, and we've all taken a toy and put it in a bin. Yeah. Uh, we probably have the most successful toys for tots program in the state. In the state. 
and let, let's challenge the rest of the nation. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Tim becomes Santa. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it for everybody. He in the just room. shaves this time of year. Uh, yes, he's just go. shaving right now. <laughs> but uh, Tim becomes Santa, and I'll tell you what, he's got, he's got some crew. And uh, you talk about a mechanized force. We really appreciate everything you do. And this is, might be an outreach for the veterans, but the, the amount of outreach that you do in the community uh, is awesome. And again, with the Special Olympics and everything else that uh, is happening, thank you for going above and beyond what a Veterans Council is. Thank you. Appreciate it. And we, like, and we appreciate you guys. We'll, we'll, can we get this up on the website, Joe? Yes. It's already there. It's there. Okay. Yeah, right. Julian's done all that stuff. And, and Super. I just kind of go, wow, wow. Good. You know, at this age, uh, I'm fortunate I can turn on my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for all you do, gentlemen. Appreciate it. See you there. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Yes, sir. You'll find out more if you... If you call the colonel's telephone, you'll, you'll get the whole listing of how and what and what he's doing. Everything. All right. <laughs> now for a garbage update. Takes a while. Bob, don't leave. <laughs> oh, I he was Welcome, Vince. For the record, my name is Vincent Burke, Director of Utility Services. I'd like to provide the board and some of the folks at home who may not have an opportunity to be here this morning to find out what's going on with the garbage and recycling collection, but to come right out and say it, um, we have to admit that there's been some, uh, some headaches and some troubles along the way. We admit that. We recognize that. We certainly understand that there's been some confusion as far as when the pickups will occur, and we want to try to set the record straight for some of those folks out there today. So I think you've seen in the Treasure Coast newspaper some of the statistics and some of the figures. I think as of Monday, we had about 81% of the carts delivered. There was a big push on the weekend where close to 11,000 carts were put out over Saturday and Sunday. Not so much on Sunday because of the heavy rains, but we had uh, crews of 14 crews out throughout parts of the county. 5,940 were delivered on Saturday and another 4,835 carts were delivered on Sunday, again close to 11,000. Um, on Monday, we had close to about 3,000 carts delivered, but I know that not only internally to the county, but also at Waste Management Call Center, they received about 2,300 calls just from folks wanting to know where's my bin, what's going on with my pickup, where's my recycles, uh, what's happening with the blue bins, and stuff like that. So. To reiterate, we came in front of the board to say that this week, October 5th, the first full week, all the blue bins will be picked up by waste management if you choose to put those out on the curb. Most, if not all, of the recycle bins either have been delivered or will be delivered today. There's additional crews out there in parts of Serona Trace, Lexington Place, off of 5th Street Southwest that did not get their new 64-gallon blue carts, but we have crews out there today delivering those carts. If for some reason there's a missed pickup, we ask folks to call waste management at 569 one seven seven six for tracking purposes. Again, that number is five six nine one seven seven six. Waste management will track those, and we'll get the crews out there. You can always call the uh, the SWID hotline as well, which is seven seven zero five one one two. And we have been doing just that yesterday. We've been fielding a lot of calls internally at the landfill, here at the administration's office, as well as uh, over at the main switchboard to try to make sure that we listen to some of the residents. I personally called probably twenty or thirty folks yesterday, to try to make sure that we understand their complaints and concerns. There's a lot of transition. The three main things that we have to reiterate is anytime you have a major transition like this, again, we went from a dual stream system to a single stream, so just to get that word out there. I know I drove through McCanch Park this morning. We had still folks that had not uh, received the recycle bins, but uh, we're still using the 18-gallon carts. They're going to be given those today. But that's big number one is to switch from dual stream to single stream. The second major switch is the new carts. As you know, we've ordered close to 79,000 carts, and it's been a logistic uh, challenge to try to get those carts not only put out but to deliver it uh, in time before the, the, uh, the start, and we are continuing to do so. Again, the additional crews were brought in, 14 crews on the weekend, and we're working with Waste Man to make sure that we have enough feet on the ground, so to speak, to get those carts delivered. And last but not least, there was a new hauler in town for the south part of the area. So there's a lot of confusion in talking to some of those folks at Hammock Lakes and some of the folks down at Millstone Landing saying, hey, what's going on? You told me this was supposed to happen, and that's why we're working with Waste Management. So 
and all we just wanted to give an update to the board we certainly have folks here from waste management if there's any specific questions but realize this at the end of the day the take-home message is the trash will be picked up the recycling will be picked up we've already seen a slight increase in the tonnages just tracked through the landfill I had Hamanchu pull some of the scale reports over the last four days we've seen anywhere from 20 to 30 tons we're averaging about 15 to 20 tons of the dual stream and I think we'll be back to the board hopefully once some of the dust settles so to speak to provide some additional updates as far as the tonnages that are coming in from the from the from the um, single stream. I personally had my uh, garbage bin delivered last night when I got home at 7:30. So then to transfer material from my old garbage bin into the new bin is something that we're asking folks. But for those folks that have signed up for garbage service that don't yet have the new bin, we're asking those folks to use their old bin, put it on the curb, and the trash will be picked up. I, again, I reiterate, the trash will be picked up if you don't have your new garbage bin yet. Again, I'm here to answer any specific questions. I appreciate the patience of the commission office and the commission staff to answer a tremendous amount of phone calls um, over the weekend and through the, the first part of the week. We're going to continue to see those phone calls, um, but we're certainly working uh, very long and very hard hours to make sure that the residents are taken care of and they have the proper information so they can understand what's going on. Benny, I had some call, filled some calls yesterday up, up from the area south of the mall, okay. south of State Road 60. <clears throat> Their pickup day is tomorrow, and in all likelihood, I anticipate they'll probably get their containers tonight. But uh, that was just one that, if if we can give that some attention, I don't know how to, to direct the drop-off crews, but it was basically just that whole area from 60 Oaks. Um, specifically between College Lane and uh, Route 60. Yeah, we yes. Look at that, and that's one of the the issues is today is um, the crews that are out there that have recycling carts. For those folks that have recycling today, the push again, like we mentioned over at Serona Trace, is to get those recycling carts out. Once they do that, the trucks will come through and pick up the recycling material, and then the goal is to get all of the garbage and recycling out for those Wednesday Wednesday folks that will sure. have that. So it may be last minute. You may be getting your carts at seven o'clock tonight, but we ask folks to just understand that there's a logistic uh, issue we're trying to get those carts out um, and we are certainly working to try to make sure that they're there but again if for some reason the carts are not delivered we ask folks to put their their garbage out of the curb and it will be picked up by waste management okay commissioners any questions or comments uh just one i um had the or i took the opportunity i saw a crew uh putting out uh the blue recycle bin so i joined them for a while and rode on the truck and and for people, they, they think it's just dropping off a bin. Well, it's not. It's a five-man crew, and I was with the, the Brad Turner crew from Alabama, great bunch of guys. You've got a driver. You've got a photo documenter. Every bin that's put out, they have to photograph it in place, prove it's there. You've got the assembler on the truck, and you've got what I call two, one guy on each side of the street walking, putting the bins out. And they go. you can only go so fast safely, but uh, they were doing a great job, and it was, it was raining a pretty good clip when we were doing that, and they didn't miss a beat. They just kept right on working, so... They're doing a great job, and I know we're going to have some glitches with this, but I think in a in a short period of time we'll be back to a normal operation, and um, and then we'll look forward to seeing those those tonnage reports, um, and hopefully we'll see those you know on the rise, and that it's going to have a great uh, benefit of us getting to our goals. Okay, thank you very much, Benny. Thank you. All right, appreciate it. That concludes our proclamations and presentations. I'll entertain a motion for the minutes. Move approval. We've got a motion to approve the minutes of September 10th, 2015 for the preliminary budget hearing by Commissioner Flesher, and I will second that. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The motion passes unanimously. Commissioners, anything from the uh, information items? I have one for Go ahead. Dylan on the current expense to date on the electric on the Public Service Commission. Uh, the next court visit. Um, I'm just looking at our remaining balance, and we have our our um, I'm trying to think which is the court jurisdiction that's going. I'm drawing a blank. The uh, Florida, Florida Supreme this, Court. This uh, commissioner, you're talking about the December 10th date. This yes. is our uh, hearing on uh, December 10th, uh, 2015. I assume. Do we have, based on what we have, either? paid or encumbered or in the pipeline to be paid. I just want to make sure we have enough to make sure we go through that hearing uh, properly and that we're funded to keep those those challenges going. We'll, we will do a budget amendment, make sure we're, it'll come to, we'll do a budget amendment if we're getting close to make sure that we've appropriated the funds and the commission has approved it. Okay. And, and just so the commission understands, um, we've 
submitted our reply, you know, we've submitted the initial brief, submitted the reply, and the only thing left now is just for preparing for the oral argument on December 10th. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Commissioners, that moves us to the consent agenda. Is there anyone who would like to have anything pulled for special consideration? Is there anybody from the public that wishes to have anything pulled from the consent agenda for special consideration? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda. Second. A motion from Commissioner Flesher and a second from Commissioner Zork to approve the consent agenda. If there's no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. That moves us to the public hearings. And uh, this is the this item was continued from the September 22nd meeting. And um, commissioners, at this time, we have staff ready to give the full presentation. However, um, it was brought to my attention that <coughs> some people were concerned about not having a full vote here. And almost it was kind of brought to my attention that it may have the appearance of trying to do something um, <coughs> less than above board. And as the chairman, uh, I know that this board that likes to happen. operate in, a, in a, 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 a transparent way, above board, and, and more importantly, a fair way to give everybody the opportunity to, to be heard on any issue, regardless of whether uh, the, the, the we agree or disagree, even amongst ourselves. So what I've, in, in light of Commissioner O'Brien being absent, um, I'm going to suggest that we postpone this again or continue this again. Mr. Well, Chairman, Mr. Chairman no, the only uh, concern I have is that uh, I, I don't know if we can see if there's anyone here that took the time Absolutely. to, no, I'm, I'm uh, going to go have, ha have, have the time to express their view and, and opinion. So if uh, what, what I'd like to do first, though, is, is uh, I would certainly if, if if three members of this commission objected to that, then it's all for naught. We need to go ahead and do I most certainly don't okay. object. So That's Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'd like to go ahead and make a motion that we continue the this public hearing at the October 13th meeting and that we allow anybody who wants to speak today to speak today so they can make it part of the public record. Second. Okay. We've got a motion to, to uh, continue this public hearing until the, the next meeting in, uh, what would that be, the 13th? Yes, sir. Uh, and so at this time, um, Stan, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest that we forego your presentation because we'll let you do that at the next one. But by all means, anybody that wishes to speak here today, um, we're, we, if you'd like to speak, you're here, you took the time. I tried to email as many people as possible. If you missed that email, I, 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 I don't know what to do other than let me have your email. Uh, but we've, we've tried to create a list of uh, interested parties. Uh, that is the commission, um, the, 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 the committee, et cetera. And so um, welcome. Well, and, Mr. Uh, we have to vote on that first. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and vote to, to continue. Uh, if there's no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote on the motion to continue this to the next meeting in addition to today. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The motion passes unanimously. Now, at this time, we're going to close this hearing. We're going to open up the public hearing, and, uh, and that's the formalities we have to do. So we're going to close this hearing, and then we're going to open up the public hearing and welcome. Well, thank you very much, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, uh, my name is David Hunter. Um, I'm from the city of Vero Beach in uh, Indian River County, and uh, we do... Uh, vote for county commissioners and we also pay taxes to the county and the school board and to the special assessment so we're definitely uh, interested in what the county is deciding and regarding this uh, particular issue uh, that you have just uh, postponed uh, I was not aware that there was going to be a postponement so uh, I made an effort to come down here um, I just want to briefly uh, mention that uh, I'm concerned uh, about two items on this uh, proposal. Uh, one is this, uh, what you call overflow parking uh, question. Um, I don't think that it is advisable to have such a large amount of overflow parking in addition to the amounts that are proposed in, in parts one through three. Uh, so I think that I'm strongly against this whole part four. Um, I think that it's uh, uh, really uh, more appropriate to have parking as a uh, factor relating to the occupancy limits that are set on a commercial property. And I think that in a way you have kind of taken this backwards by going at parking first and not looking at what is the occupancy limit of a commercial rental, short-term rental property. 
um, hotels have occupancy limits and then the hotel spaces are assigned based on that. If you have a three bedroom house, your occupancy is probably six people and therefore you should have appropriate parking in relation to that, not this question of overflow parking that might allow for 25 spaces because you've got a big yard that you can, you can pave over. So uh, that's the first uh, issue that I'd like you to consider, that I'm not in favor of that fourth section and I think it ought to be tied to occupancy limits, which is something you need to address in connection to the expansion of this uh, uh, handling of vacation rental properties. I also would like to remind you that all of the vacation rental properties, if they're doing this legally, they are supposed to obtain a state of Florida license from the Department of Business and Professional Regulation, which specifically states that they are running a transient public dwelling establishment. And this is a requirement, it's a legal requirement by the state of Florida. And if they have that license, then you can then apply your own county uh, requirements on that commercial enterprise. Uh, you have absolute right to specify occupancy limits, uh, fire and safety exits, as we've discussed before. Uh, they need to clearly post uh, uh, th the fact that they are uh, running this as a business establishment and obtain local and county licenses. You should cross-check those things against the taxes that are being paid because they should be paying uh, the uh, business tax and the uh, transient occupancy tax, or what's called a bed tax. Your, part of your plan initially was to raise revenues for the county. Well, you're not raising revenues for the county if they're not registered and if they're not paying taxes. So that's another part that it's not related to parking, but I want you to just try to understand that this is a bigger issue than just uh, the, the one area of overflow parking. Uh, and the concept that you can have a owner of a property uh, who has obtained for a state of Florida license uh, and now has announced that they are renting this as a commercial uh, rental unit for short-term rentals. Uh, th this man or woman or out-of-state person can come back and occupy that property for a week or a weekend and suddenly it reverts back to being a non-commercial property for that period of time. That is not a, a reasonable presumption and it would make enforcement uh, very Im I I I difficult, if not impossible. Uh, if someone wants to rent as a commercial unit, then it is out there as a short-term transient dwelling unit. And until they revoke that license from the state and convert it to a non-commercial purpose, it should remain only as a commercial short-term residential dwelling unit. It should not be flipping back and forth into a private property for the weekend while the resident owner decides to come in from Michigan or someplace and, uh, uh, and, and use it for that w one weekend. That's, that's just ludicrous. So those are my comments. I'd like to uh, add th you. have you add that uh, to your consideration uh, when you deal with this next week. Thank you very Mr. much. Honor, and thank you. And, and I, I certainly do um, would like to still get your, e if you feel comfortable, uh, give your email address because I'd like to, you know, we still have, after we make the decision uh, next week, we still have the committee that's looking into some things because we're, we, we're, we want to try to address this as best we can. I'd be glad to provide that. And, and uh, if the committee wants to uh, ask, invite me in to make comments. No, no, no. Or you're, you're, you're well invited right now. Okay. You're, you are, we want you to be a part of this process. Okay. There is nothing more than, you know, not say you're going to agree or disagree. I don't know. But we want right. you to be a part of this process as a concerned resident I, of this I community. I appreciate that very much. Uh, meeting is next week. Commissioner Davis. Yes, and, there, and I will tell you about when the meeting is and everything. And that goes for anybody. I'm assuming that there's other people in here that have an interest in this that did not receive the, the, the email that I sent out. And so if you, if, only if you're interested and you'd like to know, I'll be more than happy to uh, see to it that as many people are aware of this as possible. And, uh, and, and also we've been getting suggestions from people on both sides of the issue as far as what they suggest. And I'll be more than happy to forward that to you so you have plenty of time to digest the information, even, even though you may not be a voting member of the committee to make the recommendation. We'll, uh, and so anyone else wish to speak? Welcome. Uh, Commissioner Davis, yes. I'd just like to add quickly that the first meeting of the vacation rental, the short-term vacation rental advisory committee is Thursday at 10 o'clock um, in Building B in the large conference room. Okay. Mr. Hunter, did you, did you hear that? Uh, Thursday. Yes, at 10 o'clock in bu Building B, which is uh, as you, in between the uh, property appraiser's office and the tax collector's office, there's a, a conference room on the north side of the stairs. 
and that'll be 10 o'clock. Open to the public. And it's public. open to the public. It's a, it will be advertised in accordance with the Florida Sunshine laws. We may need to overflow seating. Ah, we'll see. Yes, sir. Welcome. Good morning. My name's Tom Gilman. I have a home at 2455 23rd Street Southeast, right next to Round Island Park. And my next-door neighbor, um, Walter Foreman, couldn't be here today, and he asked me if I would read this for him, and sure. then I have my own statement. Sure. But, dear sirs, I personally attended your board meeting on September 22, 2015, and waited in the audience for an opportunity to address you on the daily rental ordinances you were debating. Unfortunately, I had an office full of patients to attend to and could not wait any longer. For the same reason, I'm un unable to address you in person today. So I provided this letter for Dr. Thomas Gilman to read at the recorded meeting. I've lived in the above address, a 7 tenths acre property in the unincorporated Indian River County since 1978. During this period of 37 years, my family and our neighbors to the south have enjoyed a quiet and peaceful oceanfront lifestyle. Even during the destructive and stressful hurricane periods, our neighborhood, through the hard work, care, consideration, and help of our neighbors of 17 and 22 years, respectively, were able to restore our quiet and peaceful quality of life very quickly. This quiet and peaceful existence that endured for 34 years and numerous hurricanes changed for the worse when, in 2012, you allowed commercial daily rental business to operate at our residents' front doors, specifically a 310 acre property, boarding groups of over 16 people of unknown origin, arrived in 10, 12, even 18 cars and trucks for short periods of time to remove the pristine peace and tranquility of the adjoining 3.2 acre properties. In other words, a rental business occupying 9% of the property area has negatively impacted the quality of life and value of 91% of the adjoining properties over the last three years. Words written on a piece of paper cannot convey noise, garbage stents, trespassing, commercial parking lots, parties, reunions, the general social abuse of these types of unregulated businesses. You have to personally experience the affront of these businesses to properly understand and feel the distress of your constituents by having one of these businesses operate on your front doorstep of your residence. With this in mind, the message I would like to deliver to you is the event ordinance you recently passed with the amount of nothing without steel of the proposed parking ordinance backing it up. Ten cars parked on the lawn of a three-tenths acre property with 18 strangers claiming to be on vacation, enjoying a football barbecue, has the same disruptive effect as a wedding or family reunion. You control the car influx. You control the disruptive stranger influx and their parties, irrespective of how they describe the event. In conclusion, please allow the sound advice of your own planning and zoning commission, who rejected both part four of the proposed ordinance, and the suggestion the business parking restrictions should be set aside when the owner sleeps at the house for a week each year. Your planning and zoning commission saw through the ploy of undermining the annual state business dwelling license, and so should you. Should you follow the advice of your own planning and zoning commission by implementing their version of the parking ordinance and enforcing the invent ordinance, you will not have cured the problems of 2012, but you certainly provide a small measure of release. Sincerely yours, Walter Foreman, MD. Does, did he, would Dr. Foreman like to be on the, the email also? I don't know whether he would have time to or? I, I, I would imagine. What I don't know is email address okay. offhand, but I'll get it. Okay. Please do. And see to it because, again, it, not that he wants to be at the meeting. I just want him to be aware of the meeting. Right. And, I'll, I'll let him know okay. for sure. Now, I just had a few remarks on my Welcome. own. Sure. Please. You know, parking, I live right next door to Walter and next door to Dr. Conway in this Vacation rental is right behind us, and there's times I pull in. It, it's so bad I can't get to my house. I've said this before to you. There's no respect or consideration for the neighbors. Uh, th this place was unlicensed for the first year until they, I guess, they were turned in. And, you know, they only care about the money they're they're pulling in, and the renters they're they're having a good time. So some of them probably don't even realize what's going on. But there's a loophole in that part four ordinance. Of course, I'm sure you realize that, and I'm sure. If, if you guys were there, you wouldn't like living in a situation like this. You know, I was told uh, when I said something, well, we can park wherever we want. I said, well, you know, you shouldn't be parking on the grass and in the driveway. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like we shouldn't have a commercial business in a residential neighborhood. And parking should be limited to the garage, the driveway, not all over the yard, the easement area, the common property. You know, it, and you, the commissioners, have the ability to safeguard the tranquility of the homeowners from the 
money hungry landlords who do nothing and care nothing about their neighbors, and just the money. So I sure hope you'll help us out with this situation. Thank, Thank you, you for the and time. And if, if you would like to give me your email address. I do. Oh, does that letter need to go to the clerk? And if you'd also like for that letter to, to go to the clerk that you read of, of Dr. Newman. Uh, welcome. Good morning, Commissioners. <coughs> Joseph Powell. the record, please. Uh, Joseph Powell, I'm the president of Black Swan Consulting, and I'm also uh, on the committee for the uh, short term and vacation rental representing District 2. Uh, I support the short term and vacation rental process, but on the other hand, as far as property rights, et cetera, uh, legally you can't zone people, uh, but you can do things outside or with parking, et cetera. That's why this parking is so important, to control that. And I think the people that live there have property rights also. And I, my goal would be in this, in this vacation rental and short-term rental going forward is if you drive down the street or if you live in a neighborhood, you really couldn't tell if that particular residence was a vacation rental or short-term rental or not. I think everything should remain the same pretty much. So, And when I made my first argument months ago is that, you know, if Mr. and Mrs. Brown live in – this residence and they live there for four months and then they rent it out to Mr. and Mrs. Smith for four months or 30 days or 60 days. It's no more intensity on the neighborhood. It's no more uh, density on the neighborhood and you shouldn't be able to tell the difference. So I don't think we should have cars parked all over the neighborhood and all over the lawns and stuff like that. I agree with that. And I think the way we go forward, some of the things that we vote on and we make rules and regulations to go forward, we'll be able to control that through the parking and through the different uh, rules and regulations that we put forward. But I'm definitely a uh, full support of this, but I think we need to respect the rights of the people that live here 12 months out of the year. So I'll be looking uh, to do that being on this committee. That's my input. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address anything? <clears throat> and again, you, everybody will have the opportunity to address this again, too. So if you can make it down for the next one. Welcome. Name and address for the record, sure. please. Uh, Miles Conway, 2340 South Highway A1A. Uh, Mr. Chairman, all I'm going to say today is just to extend the apologies of my president of the South Beach Property Homeowners Association, Mr. George Lamborn. Uh, he's uh, still up in Southampton, New York. He hoped to, to have come down here to address you today, but unfortunately he's got a very severe infection of his legs and he can barely walk. Mm -hmm. He's hoping the, the new antibiotics will kick in and he'll be down here on the sure. 13th to address you. If not, our treasurer of the South Beach Owners Association, Mr. Carter Taylor, will, um, reserve, will read out a statement on his behalf. But he is, feels very, very strongly that he would like to address you on this issue. And well, and, and uh, Godspeed his recovery. And uh, if he'd like to, uh, if he can't by chance, if, if he'd like to write something for the record, yes. just similar to what's happened, we'd, yes, be, we'd entertain that. And then on, on my part, I'll keep my gunpowder dry for next week. Sounds good. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address this issue? Okay, seeing none, then what we're going to do, commissioners, we're going to, I'm just going to close this. No, no uh, we're going to, we're going to continue the, this. To the, the, the process, yeah, the process will be that you will continue the public hearing until October 13th. And what I heard earlier today was what the terminology was, is that we had postponed the item to the, to October 13th as a matter. So that. All right. And that concludes that portion of the agenda and moves us now into Mr. The Chairman just just one announcer we, we've gotten two email addresses anything else we have we'll add to the list and give them uh, yes. email them the meeting packet D that and then there's also I tell you what if you will just give that to Misty she'll sh we'll see to it that everybody gets has gets the stuff that she's going to be t the uh, recording secretary for the for that board and so um, just real quick if, if, commissioners if you don't mind what can you tell us or educate us on about the ordinance as we passed it for the events last week or and the uh, has anything come into the office transpired registered sure a couple of things there were some phone calls uh, immediately after the meeting explaining that there are two exceptions to the prohibition on weddings and similar events uh, and we have had on one of the properties on south a1a sewer la mer uh, they have come in with uh, events that are, were booked prior to the 22nd. Uh, so we do have a list of those events, and we've advised them of even uh, that they are allowed. They're not prohibited from having the events, but uh, we inform them of 
existing parking regulations, existing sea turtle protection uh, regulations, and noise and nuisance regulations we have, especially after 10 p.m. So they're aware of those regulations that are already in effect. That's the only party that we have heard from in terms of already booked events. We've also heard from two uh, owners of uh, agricultural properties. As I'd mentioned before, um, Walter Secret Garden is in with their uh, temporary use permits, so and no, none of the events are affected there. And one other uh, event place, uh, we anticipate getting a permit application in within the next few weeks. Okay. One question, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Stan, the, the first property you mentioned is La Mer? Sur La Mer, it's a 60-foot right. wide but very long okay. A1A to ocean property that's south not of the island. The, uh, there's one down there that's larger that the, the lady that spoke um, last time, so I'm, I'm getting him confused. I just wasn't sure if that was the one that's like a two-acre home. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, right. Right. This, um, th this is this one is that has had events uh, in, in, in the past and, and even recently, and, and there's been a, a, a quite a bit of parking along A1A uh, right. with some it's of the events. Very wind You try to drive back in there. It's, it's a very long and winding driveway, narrow driveway. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And just, Mr. Chairman, and Stan, uh, as far as the uh, the two exemptions that you just uh, talked about about the permits, and I believe there's a third uh, when where they have that ample amount of area for parking that can be reserved for parking, uh, the parking portion would not come into play for them. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. In other words, they for the, the the larger parcels that are allowed to have the temporary use permit. Uh, we don't have a limitation on parking. They can because they have ample area and, and, and buffering capabilities for it. As Mr. Pallon said, it would you, you would not know that there was an event taking place. That that would be the hope, especially after 10 p.m. Vehicles. Yes, thank you. Okay. If there's no further discussion on that, we'll move on to the next item, which brings us all the way to public works. Mr. Moore, welcome. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Thank you. Chris Mora, Public Works Director for the County. Uh, this is an update item on the Petition Millings project for the Pine Tree Park subdivision. About a year ago, you asked us to hold one of the uh, projects, the fourth place project, for a year to see if we could get a valid uh, two-thirds participation a petition from the residents. Just to show you where we're at, this is Pine Tree Park, a rural uh, unpaid roadway uh, subdivision in the uh, just east of 66th Avenue between 4th Street and A Street. Uh, when we started this process about four years ago, residents came in and wanting um, paved roads. Uh, there, at the time, there was currently just one paved road, 63rd Avenue, which runs north-south between 4th and 8th. That was the only paved road at the time. The uh, residents came in wanting paved roadways uh, throughout the subdivision. Uh, once they learned of the cost, they backed that down to just millings on the roadways. And once they uh, petitioned everyone in the subdivision, it kind of broke down to, well, they wanted just two possible roadways to have the millings on. One was seventh place, the one at the top there. Uh, that project came through with a valid petition uh, and we brought it to the board in 2013 and finished that project in 2013. The second project that came through originally at it with a 75 percent petition is fourth place. That's the red dotted line down at the bottom there. Uh, we brought that to the board uh, early last year. Uh, at the time we brought um, the resolution forward, some of the residents uh, I think, believe it was about nine respondents began to rescind their approval. Once they got a look at the costs, they decided that they didn't want to go through with it. Uh, the board asked staff to write letters to each of the petitioners, kind of verifying whether they wanted or didn't want the project. Um, we verified that nine of the uh, petitioners had withdrawn their support, which brought them below the two-thirds level, down to about 55%. Uh, the board asked staff to keep the project open until September 30th, uh, which was just last week. 
uh, of 2015 to see if any of them changed their mind and if the cost of millings came down, would they be willing to support the project? Uh, six out of the nine wrote us back and said they're no longer willing to participate in the project even if the price came down to the original engineer's estimate. And then three of those nine never responded. So at this point, we do not have a valid two-thirds petition for fourth place, and our recommendation is that we cancel that project. Mr. Chairman, move staff recommendation. Second. Second from Commissioner Slory. For motion from Commissioner Slory with second from Commissioner Flesher. Any further discussion? Yes, I have one. I was contacted by a resident around 6,400 fourth place. Is there a they're talking about the amount of school bus traffic that goes on fourth place. Uh, do you know in the, the meetings that you had, was that brought up as one of the reasons why to do it? They wanted to know why this, because of the amount of school buses that go on the street, why the school board wasn't <coughs> participating in improving it. And um, I can answer that. <laughs> they're, well, they're, I know. they're not allowed. I mean, they can't spend the education dollars fixing roads, right? Right, and that it's not unique. They have um, right. they have school buses that, that go throughout yeah. Pine Tree Park, uh, right. and it's not unusual. Uh, but they don't, no, they don't participate in our right. Road. And that's kind of the answer that I provided. But um, it doesn't seem like there could be more, you know, more than a couple. I haven't gotten with um, the school district to find out. You know, is it ten buses or two um, to know really how heavy is the impact? But you know, they have to go where the kids are to pick them up, so. Probably really. three. Mm -hmm. Probably one for each middle school, elementary school, and high school, if I had to guess. And then times two, morning and afternoon. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. Utilities approval of the retaining Timrose Contracting, Inc. to restore outbound south, outside southbound lane of U.S. Highway 1 damaged by the water main break. Vinny, Thank welcome. You, Chairman. For the record, Vincent Burke, Director of Utility Services. On page 228 of your agenda item, we have the approval of retaining Timrose Contracting. This is a story of a water line that had broken south of uh, 11th Street Southwest. The repair was made, but unfortunately the line had broken again. FDOT is doing work in this area, and so we had reached out to Community Asphalt to see if uh, Community Asphalt was the FDOT contractor that was doing the work on US-1 to see if we could do a change order with Community Asphalt. For various reasons, they told us that we would be unable to do that. However, they were under some time constraints to do some of that work, so we reached out to uh, three contractors, Community Asphalt, Blue Goose and Tim Rose to try to get some pricing. It turns out that Tim Rose contracting is the lowest of the three, the most responsive and responsible bidder. Um, in addition to that, the county will be required to um, uh, go after and be issued a utility permit for the FDOT work in that, uh, in that repair process. And so um, the amount of 5198750 is what's been brought to the board. Um, and uh, basically, due to the time constraints with the FDOT work, there has been talk about some liquidated damages if we can't get this work done, which is why staff is bringing this item to um, have the board waive the, um, the bid process. We did solicit three qualified contractors to provide that bid, and we're asking the board to uh, authorize a purchasing division to issue a purchase order to Tim Rose Contracting for the US-1 repair work. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer those questions. We'll approve. Got a motion from Commissioner second. Fletcher to approve with a second from Commissioner Slory. If there's no further discussion, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Benny. Next, we have my items, and this, this is just more of a housekeeping, uh, commissioners, uh, with some of the changes that they but that needed to take place with the uh, Treasure Coast Workforce Consortium and the Workforce Development Board of the Treasure Coast. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, um, Mr. Chairman? Sir. I do. Okay. Uh, now, of course, my preference is to, to ask if there's some way we can sunset this. Sure. And given that it may be out of our hands, I will. Like, reading through it, mm -hmm. I understand why the housekeeping changes are here, and I grasp them. But it, it made me realize that I don't understand what the commissioner's role in this is, and maybe you can help me understand that more well, so somebody's got to to be the, the, the an oversight governing body i guess well, now and go ahead well, I, how is that done i mean did you, you it it's, it says that the chairman acts as the 
county's representative. Mm -hmm. Did you act as the county's representative? Yes, yes. And, and how many times did you all meet? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Maybe once a quarter, maybe. Okay, and, so, and I do it over the phone so I don't travel. Okay. Did you see any real substance to it? It's, it's more of a state program that they, they, they do here locally. So And so the executive director there, and, and probably the best thing to do, I'd be more than happy to, to postpone this if you'd like until the next meeting. Probably the best thing for me to do is to go ahead and let you get with the executive director and uh, let him go over the the issues that, that you you have here versus me defending the program. Okay. Um, and is that Stetson? Richard. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody else you can talk to? Sure. I mean, I don't know who, but I, I'm, I'm serious yeah. because they. Yeah, I, there, well, there, he's, he, there is one of him in every one of the regional consortiums. Is there anybody in the county that deals with any of this? Helene might. Helene, maybe, yeah. yeah. I mean, to a certain extent, through the the chamber with work. Okay. Board. I mean, I, it just as these things come up, sometimes sometimes it seems that, or it's been my experience at, at serving on that commission, that sometimes these committees get going and then they have a life of their own, even mm -hmm. though they no longer serve any purpose, and I, I was just wondering if this might be one of those committees. So I, I'd be happy if we can postpone it for a month, and and if I can find somebody who can actually we'll get started on that. I'll justify have, why. We'll, yeah. You know, the little thing, I, I didn't realize, I, I missed a piece of it. I, I saw that there were 21 board members on this board, right. not the commissioner's board. Right. I still don't understand There's a, what fits where. It's kind of like the hospital district. I'm still confused <laughs> on that one. Sure. <laughs> but I, I believe that the county attorney said there actually were 42. Mm -hmm. that, I think there were 43. Oh, yeah. 43. I mean, how could you possibly have a board with 43 freaking people on it? It's beyond me. And I, I, 21 still seems, you know, more than excessive. But, you know, so I, I would like sometimes to just get some understanding of whether there is any value to this or, or whatever. And I don't I mean to, that. I'm hoping I'm not slowing down anything. I and mean, there's nothing I can see that I'd actually be slowing down anything material. But w would like to get some idea of whether this has actually got. What, what I'll do is I'll reach out to several people uh, and and try to get several venues of information for you. Thank you. Or to you for you to uh, ask your questions. I very much appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. Thank so you. We'll just as Mr. As uh, Commissioner Davis now serves on the, on that board as an active liaison. Uh, I had the opportunity to do that for several years, and uh, during that time, uh, a lot was accomplished. Uh, a lot of voids were filled as far as employment opportunities, education, uh, the, the sites, and uh, I have a lot of uh, great thoughts of, of what was accomplished during those years. But I do also share the same feeling you have when you're looking at 43 members. Uh, it, it, it is a rather lengthy meeting too. Yeah, and and, and it'll only grow. I, I, I have it. The purpose of it, it seems to be very important and could be very useful to our community. It's just the, is the bureaucracy of it as useful as probably my question. Well, I could probably answer that right now, but I'll let you reach your own conclusions. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Cameron. sir. Absolutely. So, I heard from Commissioner Sorry that you wanted to defer it, postpone it for a month. So yes. So for the first meeting in November, Commissioner Davis, does that present any problems? I, I, I don't know. Okay. And if it does, we'll, uh, we'll address that. If we find out that it does, we can always accelerate it. That okay. would be fine. I've got no yeah. And that may give us all the opportunity to hear about the benefits of the uh, consortium uh, becoming yep. consolidated, but okay. to expand it at the same Super. time. Well, commissioners, I tell you what, uh, that concludes the, the things that I have to do. So you all just want to, we can take a recess and try to make it to 1030. Other than that, we'll just adjourn this meeting. <laughs> mm <clears throat>